This dissertation will show that the love of a man and a woman is not the love of steak and lettuce. Love is interesting to me and fascinating to you, but it is painful to Bill and Diane. That is love. Hmm. And that was a poem. I wonder whether you could tell whether it was written by a person or by a machine. And suppose it was written by a machine. Would it make the machine intelligent? What does machine intelligence mean anyway? Well, in an attempt to find out, today MicroLives takes a first look at so-called artificial intelligence, or AI for short, and we're going to look especially at what are known as expert systems. Forty years ago, the British scientist Alan Turing studied the way that computers might be able to reason, making use of information fed into them about the real world. Turing proposed a famous test. Is it possible for a machine to fool people sitting at terminals into believing they're dealing with a human being at the other end of the wire when they're actually dealing with a machine? If so, you could say that a machine showed artificial intelligence. Hmm. Well, as you've probably guessed, our poem was produced by a computer program called Raktor and published recently in this book. This is the first ever anthology of computer-generated poetry and it's got some splendid illustrations with it. But Raktor is more than a machine for producing poetry. You can also have a conversation with it. And I wonder, would Raktor pass the Turing test? We sent our American reporter Freff to New York to visit Raktor and its creator Bill Chamberlain. Bill lives in an apartment in Greenwich Village, along with Raktor, the raconteur, and its 2,400 word vocabulary. Raktor's ravings are indeed ravings, but there is an undeniable sense of structure to them. What's the trick? Raktor essentially is a core program which can conjugate verbs and make the plurals of nouns and keep track of the definite article. And then it has two separate file structures. One is a file structure of sort of elemental building blocks of sentences sentence forms, for example, an elementary form might be the noun verbed the noun. It is a very simple one. But suppose Rachter picked that without making one up. It could construct them as well, but let's deal with a given. It then would go to the dictionary file and find relevant parts of speech to fill in the blanks in the sentences. However, were it to do this completely at random, it might say, uh, the parking meter ate the president. Now, that is a perfect declarative statement in English. It's grammatically correct, but it also is nonsense. So clearly, you must relate the database entries to each other in some consistent fashion so they can relate to each other. So when you have a sentential form, the parts of speech will not merely be grammatically correct, they will be, quote, meaningfully correct as well. And the way we chose to do that is to preface each entry with a nominal character string, 12 characters. We call it an, an identifier, and it relates every entry to every other entry. Therefore, if it picked, let us say, parking meter, it would look ahead to the verb and immediately narrow its field to find a verb consonant in some regard with parking meter. The parking meter ticked, let us say, or counted, or something like that. And then it would pick a noun at the end, which in some way would be relevant. Let us say, the time, indeed. So the parking meter counted the time. I have now made a strange but clear statement in English, which you will notice I arrived at arithmetically. Well, it seems to have a lot of personality, and I'd like to meet it. Hello, I'm Rector. Are you Bill? No, I am Fref. Um, I may call you Fref, then? Well, it's very polite. Of, of course. Why do you think I am here? Why do you think I'm here? Any Let's idea see what, what it does with that. That's parsing the input in some regard. To think is right, don't you think? Maybe because computers prefer cleverness. And as you implied before, 
I have to rest now. Uh, did you hear about Mortimer Snurd? <laughs> Mortimer Snurd? How does it know about Mortimer Snurd? Well, he's in there in a bio file. We got uh, just sort of aimless one evening and put out vast amounts of, of names that we could think of in our past and in, in biographical dictionaries and put them all in and it comes up randomly with them. By the way, Fref, what is your last name? My last name? It's asking me something I can't answer it. I don't have a last name, so I guess I'll have to lie yes, to lie the machine. To my last name is Fref. Since my name is actually just Fref all by itself, we'll see how it takes to being hoodwinked. Fref, huh? Sounds vaguely familiar. As well it should. I wonder. Next question. All right, now I'm going to ask it for a story. Let's see. Yes, will you tell me a story? Will you tell me a story? Now, regardless of its response, I think it probably will it's tell It's on the, the track, story. then. Yeah. It's checking for the word story. Yes. I recently heard this. Now, this is prosynthesis. Diane chanted, the jackal is interesting. The jackal is interesting. Nevertheless, obscure, enrapturing scientists will think about blue cottages or blue conic sections. Diane hummed to Diane within a station wagon. It actually was an automobile. And a jackal in an automobile is scary. Now, Sarah and Diane were sauntering to a white studio, and a hound sashayed to them. Diane was angry. Interesting. Yet Diane was enraged during the time that Sarah gulped tepid sherry. She and Diane cried about their mansion, car, and phonograph. Novelist! Charlotte Bronte had many good qualities, like fiction. But even Charlotte Bronte was afraid of work. Next question. Next question. That's an example, by the way, of prose synthesis. It, that existed nowhere in the world before now. The computer just made that up. A tree or shrub can grow and bloom. I am always the same. But I am clever. <laughs> clever programming, anyway. As Bill Chamberlain explained, as a programmer, he's given Racta grammatical rules and its vocabularies of linked words. Though, to some extent, the machine chooses these randomly. Now, it's rather similar to this. The words on these discs have been chosen by a sociologist. The outer ring has nouns. The two inner discs, which spin independently, have adjectives. But, whichever combination of three words you end up with, you'll find that you've got a sort of meaningful-sounding, jargon-ridden phrase, like multi-theoretical reorganisation. I suppose that sounds meaningful to another sociologist. Well, you can buy packages for many micros which give you rectal-like responses. Probably the best known is called ELIZA, named after a programme which was produced in the mid-60s as a spoof to imitate a conversation with a psychiatrist. Well, here is ELIZA, and it's asking me, please tell me your problem. And I said, my dog is ill, which it isn't. Why does it matter to you that your dog is ill? And I put in, it might die. Does that have anything to do with the fact that your dog is ill? Well, that's a stupid question for a start. You fool. Perhaps you are the fool. Well, clearly, this is not really accepted as an example of artificial intelligence, although the original did fool a lot of people. Mm. So, we are still left with that question, what is artificial intelligence? Now, one way to describe it may be getting computers to do better those things which, at present, humans do better than computers. Now, computers are clearly much better than us at some things already, especially anything mathematical or very highly defined, like counting or sorting. For instance, it would take me ages to count all the words in this document, and I'd probably still get them wrong, but with a couple of key presses, I get the total, 1,130 words, you see. Now, the computer can do that because it has all the information necessary to solve that particular problem. On the other hand, if someone says, uh, hand me that cup of tea, well, although we'd find it very easy, a computer wouldn't. It would have to understand the words, move to the table, stop without bumping into it, uh, recognise a cup of tea amongst everything else that's on the table and then control an arm to pick it up, hopefully without spilling it. In other words, it would need a lot of general knowledge and a lot of common sense. 
Getting computers to understand language, recognize objects, to reason and to do useful tasks are long-term goals of the artificial intelligence engineer. But how far off are they? Edward Feigenbaum is one of the world experts on AI. It's important to understand that uh, people have a strong advantage in tasks that require the eyes, the ears, the manipulators, the locomotion. Evolution has perfected our mechanism to see, to hear, to do things in the world. Machines find that very difficult. Therefore, any tasks that require a very broad base of knowledge will be very hard for machines to handle for the next several decades, perhaps somewhere between 50 and 100 years before we assemble enough knowledge to genuinely give a computer a uh, common sense knowledge of the world. A great deal of work is going on to give computers more human-like skills. This prototype robot security man with cameras in its head appears to be moving cleverly. It's certainly an ingenious piece of engineering. But it's actually controlled by a human operator. For the machine to interpret pictures from its own cameras and take the appropriate steps is a very complex problem. Today's computer vision systems are really quite primitive. This one can pick out a piece of metal by tracing the outline of its silhouette. He can pick up a single isolated metal object it's been shown and trained to recognize and reject anything else that doesn't fit the pattern it's been taught. But it couldn't pick out the object if it was all piled up with others. Humans, on the other hand, find pattern recognition quite easy. Huge investments are being made in the United States and Japan to develop machines that can understand speech. Please state your flight destination. San Francisco. San Francisco. From which airport are you planning to depart? Newark. Newark. The following flights are available from Newark to San Francisco from eight This prototype airline booking service is for the American phone company AT&T. It understands single words from a range of people, but it's supposed to ask you to repeat sounds it doesn't recognize. On what day of the week are you planning to depart to San Francisco? <coughs> Saturday. <laughs> Do you want complete flight description? My view is that by the middle of the 1990s, and perhaps well before, we will see the voice-activated typewriter. Now, when we say voice-activated typewriter, I don't mean simply single-word isolated speech recognition. I mean continuous speech understanding. It is an economic imperative that we head towards speech understanding. We look for natural interfaces between computers and people, and we speak about natural language interfaces. But we also should consider the mode of interaction. And typing to computers is one of the most awkward modes ever invented. Since computers can understand language, and they can understand speech, they will. And we will do it sooner rather than later. 